Think of all the times you've taken pictures in low light and weren't allowed to use a flash. Chances are your pictures turned out muddy, blurry, or even unrecognizable. But if you were to use a few simple techniques, your pictures could be as bright as the pros. Today I'll teach you how to take advantage of your digital camera settings to make the most of low light situations without using a flash. And you'll learn how to work with your photos on the computer to make the most of the available light. Shed some light on flashless photography next on The Whole Picture. Welcome to The Whole Picture. I'm Erin Manning. How many times have you found the perfect subject to photograph, but low light just ruined the picture? Well, you're not alone, because shooting pictures in low light can be one of the trickiest jobs in the business. Now, on today's show, I'll talk all about shooting in low light without using a flash. I can assure you, as a professional, there are plenty of situations you'll be shooting pictures in where using a flash just isn't possible or isn't allowed. And the lighting situations can be challenging, to say the least. Now think about all the pictures you've taken at your kids' play or the art museum or even at your favorite band or rock concert. These are all great examples of shooting in low light situations where using a flash just probably wasn't possible. But don't worry, today I'll teach you some techniques that will show you all kinds of new things about shooting in low light without using a flash and shed a little light on the subject. Let's take a look at some of the pictures I took in low light. Now this is actually at a kid's play on stage, so I've got stage lighting on her. I went ahead and adjusted my camera settings. I used a lower aperture, so I was able to blur out the background a little bit and really bring her into focus. On this photograph, again, the same play, but I really wanted to emphasize the shadow and the detail in the picture, so I went ahead and used a faster shutter speed, and I was still kind of blurring out the background just a tad, bringing her right into focus in the foreground. And on this next photograph, I wanted to pick up more light in the scene, so I did open up my aperture just a little bit, and I blurred out the background, but then I additionally blurred out the background using a computer software program. So the techniques I just mentioned, I'll be teaching you about today. Now, I have a student named David who loves to go out and take pictures of his friends and bands, usually at night. He went ahead and emailed me a photograph that he took the other night, and I'm guessing that this was definitely a low-light situation because the picture is out of focus, blurry, and I can't really pick up much detail in it. But that's okay, because I've arranged a photo session with David downtown at a nightclub. That's where some friends of mine are practicing in a band called the Brandy Robinson Band. They're really good, I think we'll have a lot of fun, and it'll be a great place for David and you to learn all about the lessons. Now the first lesson I'll teach you about today is how to use your camera's image sensor to adjust for the different low light situations. Next, you'll learn about using your camera's exposure settings, and that's the shutter priority mode versus the aperture priority mode, and the different effects you can achieve using each one. Then you'll learn a little bit about white balance, because in every low light situation, lights might have a different color cast to them. With white balance, you can adjust for that. Then we'll come back here to the studio, and I'll show you how to adjust color and light just by using your computer software program. So while I head out to the nightclub, go ahead and take a look at some of my other low light situation pictures. In the mud about taking great low light pictures? Up next, I'll show you how to increase the sensitivity of your camera's photo sensor so that your pictures will be crisp and clean. And we'll show you how to pump up the light that's hitting your sensor in the first place so you get the best pictures possible. Welcome back to The Whole Picture. Are you stuck in the dark when it comes to taking pictures in low light situations, especially when you can't use a flash? Well, so is my student, David Mullinax. So I'm meeting him at a friend's band rehearsal tonight to teach him how to take great looking photographs in less than perfect light. Hey guys, how you doing? 
David, Hello. good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for coming down here tonight. You ready to take some good photographs? Oh, most certainly. Okay. Well, first, let's take a look at the photograph you took last week that you emailed me earlier today. Okay. Now, this is your low light photo, right? Mm hmm. Do you like it? Not at all. Well, it's a little blurry. Yeah. And uh, that's really a classic example of what happens when you're shooting in low light like this with no flash. Okay. But don't worry. I'm going to teach you some things tonight that will help you take a better low light photograph. Okay, great. All right. Can't wait to get started. Okay. Well, the first <laughs> thing we're going to learn about is how to change your camera sensor sensitivity to the light. Okay. And that we do that by adjusting your ISO setting. Okay. Ever heard of ISO? I've seen it, but I've, I don't know what it means. Okay. Well, you know, on your film camera, you can buy films at different speeds, right? 100, 200, 400 ASA or ISO. Mm -hmm. It means the same thing, film speed. With a digital camera, ISO is basically the camera's sensor's sensitivity to the light. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That's the ISO setting. So when you raise your ISO setting, you're going to let more light into the camera, which is great when you're shooting in low light situations like this with no flash. Right. Okay. So a lot of cameras have different ISO settings on them, 50, 200, 400 on up sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so that will let more light into your camera when you raise the ISO setting, but it does come at a price. Oh, goodness. There, there's a little <laughs> side effect called noise. What's noise? What's noise? Yeah. Noise is very similar to the grain that you might see in a traditional film photograph. Okay. okay. But we're not going to worry about that just yet. Let's just go ahead and play with the ISO settings on your camera and take some shots and have some fun. All right. When shooting in low light, you have a better chance of producing a good photograph by taking full manual control of your camera and telling it to do things it wouldn't normally do in the automatic mode. Changing the ISO is one way to do this. In most digital cameras, the ISO is adjusted by going to the ISO selection in your menu system. In low light situations, you would choose a higher ISO to increase the camera sensitivity. The image sensor is where your camera converts what comes into the lens into digital information. Think of the image sensor like the film in a film camera. What's great about digital cameras is they enable you to change ISO settings quickly to adapt to changing light conditions or to respond to different shooting situations. One of the advantages of digital cameras over film is that you can change the ISO settings from image to image. But remember the downside. The higher the ISO, the more potential for noise in your photos. Noise describes a picture that looks grainy, and it becomes most visibly apparent in the shadow areas, where instead of seeing solid black or the shadow detail, you see big blocks of color or random colored pixels. This gives the photograph a muddy, pixelated look. Unfortunately, it's not a perfect world. If you want to shoot in low light without a flash, raising the ISO is necessary, and getting around the noise is hard to do. Some digital cameras come with built-in noise reduction features, so the camera tries to automatically compensate for the noise created at a higher ISO. But if your camera doesn't have this feature, you can always work with the pictures on your computer once you get them back home. Okay, the other two settings to consider here are shutter speed and aperture. Okay. Now, most digital cameras will give you a choice between shutter priority mode and aperture priority mode. Oh, uh, what's the difference between the two? Good question. I'll show you. Right here on this dial, we'll turn it to S for shutter priority mode, mm -hmm. and that means you can select whatever shutter speed you want for fast or slower shutter, depending on the effect that you want. Okay. And then the camera will compensate for that and provide the proper aperture or lens opening for the right exposure. Okay. Now, for aperture priority, the exact opposite is true. I'll switch it to A for aperture priority. Now, you can select whatever aperture you want or lens opening for more or less depth of field, and then the camera will compensate for this with the proper shutter speed to give you the right exposure. Okay. Sounds pretty easy, right? Pretty easy, yeah. Okay. Just remember, the wider your lens opening is, that's a lower f-stop number on your camera, and the camera will then adjust the shutter speed to be faster to provide for a proper exposure. Okay. So in this lighting situation, low light, I would suggest using a faster shutter speed. Why is that? Well, because most bands, like these guys, are going to move around a lot, right, when they mm -hmm. perform. So if you're shooting at a slower shutter speed, that movement is going to cause blur in the picture. 
Right. Just like in your picture you brought in earlier today. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so that's why you want to use a faster shutter speed in this situation. Okay. So I would just say play around. Go between shutter priority mode and aperture priority mode. Play around, take a lot of pictures, and see what works best for you. Alrighty. To help make your photos look more professional, you need to understand how to take control of your camera's shutter speed and aperture. Shutter speed is the length of time the window in your camera's lens stays open to let light in. And aperture describes the size of the window when it lets that light in, which is measured in f-stops. In order to take photos that are properly exposed, it takes the right combination between shutter speed and aperture. But in low light settings, it's important to take control over the aperture and let as much light into the camera so that your camera can use the fastest shutter speed possible. The aperture also controls your depth of field. The larger the lens opening, the shallower your depth of field. The smaller the lens opening, the greater the depth of field. Professional photographers use depth of field as one of the elements in composing their images. Like in this case, it's okay to throw your background out of focus and lose some of your depth of field so that your picture isolates the performers from the background. To take manual control of your aperture and let the camera control the shutter, you need to set the camera into aperture priority mode and then manually adjust the aperture to your desired size. These settings vary, so check your owner's manual for your specific camera. Another consideration is how to steady your camera for each of these shots. Some shooting situations, like this one in a club, are not conducive for bringing along a tripod. So here are some tricks to make your camera steady. Try balancing your elbows on a hard surface, or find a railing or table to rest your camera on. Once you begin to look for other options besides a tripod, you'll find ways to make your camera steady. For more information on aperture priority mode or shooting in low light situations, log on to our website at DIYnetwork.com. While you're there, check out some of the other photos that we shot today. Now that your camera settings are in place, it's time to balance things out. Up next, I'll teach you how to manually set your camera's white balance. It seems like a tricky job, taking pictures in low light and not using a flash. But taking control of your camera's functions is the best way to get your pictures out of the dark. And to really get the best looking shots possible, you need to tell the camera what's white and what's not. Welcome back to The Whole Picture. I'm Erin Manning. Today I'm working with David and I'm giving him some lessons in low light photography without using his flash. Now we're taking pictures of my friend's band back here and using the stage light as the primary light source. Now you might have a lot of low light situations you want to take pictures in, but some of the same basic rules still apply. So you can use some of the same techniques you learned here today. So David, let's wrap up all the lessons you learned today with one last lesson about using your camera's white balance. Okay. Okay? Now when your camera's in the automatic mode, it's going to try and automatically match the color of light that you're shooting in. But you can also help it along by using the white balance settings on your camera and set it for the specific kind of light you're shooting in. So for example, the lights on the set here tonight are similar to incandescent lights, which have a golden hue to them, mm -hmm. a lot like the lights you have at your home. Right. Okay? So to get to the white balance setting, we just get into your menu here, and you can go through the menu and click on the incandescent, and we'll choose that. Now, it's a really good idea to choose that, especially when you're not shooting with a flash, and you can experiment with it and have fun. Take a lot of pictures. Kind of go back and forth between, say, the auto white balance, the incandescent, maybe try, try some of the other ones and um, see what you like. Okay. Your camera's white balance setting tells the camera what white is so it can set all the other colors correctly. Changing your white balance lets you experiment with color and can allow you the opportunity to take better photos. To change your white balance, navigate to the white balance setting in your camera. Then take your camera out of automatic and select the white balance setting you want to work with. Switching your white balance to incandescent in this case will probably make your pictures turn out less warm or golden looking than if you leave your white balance on automatic. Not only can you set the white balance to incandescent, but you'll also find other settings like daylight, cloudy, and fluorescent. Even if you're not shooting in these particular lighting conditions, 
Try setting your white balance to daylight, for example, and just see what you get. Remember, it's subjective. Go with what you like and what you think looks best. Sometimes the best pictures you take are the ones you take by accident. Okay, so now it's like they finished practicing and they're about to start the real gig. So tell you what, I'm gonna leave you here the rest of the night okay. to take all the pictures you want. Okay. Practice, practice. Gotcha. And then I'm gonna see you tomorrow in the studio and we'll look at all of them there. All right, sounds great. Okay, have Thank a good you. time. You. Will David be impressed with his pictures of the band? Or did they just create more noise than he can handle? We'll see the results next on The Whole Picture. Welcome back to The Whole Picture. Playing with the band is not as easy as it looks. And taking pictures of the band is even harder, especially when you're dealing with low light and no flash. Learning to take control of your camera is the best way to make sure that your photos will perform well. But just because the show is over doesn't mean that fine-tuning your pictures is too. That always works. I had so much fun last night. I did too. It was great. Did you stay late? A little bit, yeah. Get some good pictures? I hope, yeah. I think I did well. Okay, good. I went ahead and downloaded them all on the computer. Oh, great. So let's click through and take a look. Okay. Okay, the first one, pretty good. I like this establishing shot of the band. Mm -hmm. It's pretty nice. Let's see the next one. Okay. That's great. I'm guessing slow shutter speed on this, right? Yeah. To capture his hand movement there. Right. Very nice. Let's see the next one. Great, good composition. Let's see the next. Nice too, a little, little noise in that one, but that's okay. For effect, it could still be good. Let's okay. see the next one. Oh, that's great. You've done a nice job on these. I especially like the drums and the composition on this, too. But it's looking a little red, isn't it? Right, yeah, Due to the, sure the, is. the color of the stage lighting. So we can fix that. It's really, okay. it's really easy. Let's come up here and save it first. Come up okay. here to File on the menu bar and do a Save As. This way we can only work on the copy and save the original, archive that in case anything happens. Okay. So just change the name. Drum is good, and we'll save it. Just go ahead and click OK through here. Great, now we're working on the copy. Let's enhance this a little bit and change the color cast. Come up here to Enhance on the menu bar. And the first thing we'll work with is Adjust Smart Fix. And what Smart Fix does is it automatically adjusts the color and the lighting in your photograph, but you can control it. Oh, wow. So you can control it right by just by clicking on this little slider bar. As you move it over to the right, you'll see the color and lightness, brightness adjust in the photograph. As oh, long that is as, a difference. Yeah, big difference. As long as you have this little preview box checked. Okay. Now, if you move it way over to the right, see what happens. Really cool effect, right? Yeah. But maybe more unusual than what you want. So right. let's go ahead and move it back to the left a little bit and click OK. It's still looking a little red, yeah, right? Yeah, sure is. Let's go back up here to Enhance and roll down to Adjust Color and then move over to Adjust Hue Saturation. This is the Hue Saturation dialog box and basically what it does is it adjusts the hue or the color, the saturation, which is the purity of the color, and then the lightness or darkness of the photograph. So just by clicking on these sliders and playing around with them a little bit, we can adjust the color and the saturation of the color in the photograph. Okay. So that's good. Yeah, maybe move the hue over to the right a little, bring the saturation down a little. That looks better already. Oh, yeah, it does. That's great. Let's go ahead and click OK and do a file save. And we'll save it. And let's print it out. If you'd like to learn more about shooting pictures in low light or any of the techniques you saw here today, just log on to our website at DIYnetwork.com. Okay, David, I went ahead and posted the before picture on the computer. Let's take a look at the after photo. Wow, it looks much better. It does. You were able to get rid of that red color cast, and it's really a nice composition. <laughs> I think you did a great job. Do you feel like you've learned a lot more about shutter speed and aperture and ISO? Oh, definitely. The quality, I think, of pictures I'll have now will be much better than before. You're right. You've really come out of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep up the good work. And remember, always bring your camera with you, because the more pictures you take, the better you get. Exactly. I hope we've brought you out of the dark regarding low light photography. So play with those camera settings and have some fun. 
Join me next time on The Whole Picture. Let's work with this one too.